I want to welcome all of you this morning to our 8.30 liturgical service and those of you who are members and friends of Anchorage Lutheran and, and are usually here every Sunday but cannot be here once again this Sunday, indeed a welcome to you, but also a welcome to many of you that are uh, throughout the land that we live in. Uh, you're tuning in because you know some of the people that are involved and and you've had an opportunity to connect with us. And if you would like to do this, we would appreciate receiving word from you in terms of whether or not we've connected with you and, and how we can further carry out that connection so that we can bring the love of Christ into your homes and to your families, to your children, and, and to the world in which you are hunkered down with as well as beyond this hunkering down time. I pray that our time of worship together will be encouraging and we will celebrate this parade that Jesus leads in Jerusalem this Palm Sunday. We continue now with the prelude.
I want to thank once again the Applegate family for providing this opportunity to celebrate Palm Sunday with actual palms so that we can see the beauty of, of what people laid down before Jesus as he was going into Jerusalem. So thank you guys for all that you are doing. We continue with our order of worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness and confess our sins unto God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. We pray. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us forgiveness of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. It is my privilege as a called and ordained servant of the word to announce this grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We speak together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat>
with the scripture readings. The Old Testament lesson this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 through 9. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God opened my ear. And I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid my face from grace and spitting, but the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. He who will contend with me, let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare my guilty? I'm sorry. Who will declare me guilty? The New Testament lesson comes from Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. Look carefully, then, how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what we will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in palms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to get... <coughs> and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel lessons today is from the Gospel of St. John, the 12th chapter. The next day, the larger crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written. Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on the donkey's colt. His disciple did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees say to one another, you see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Kids, could I have you come and sit down in your spots over here? I know that all of you are, know how important it is that we follow directions, right? Well, we're going to talk about a parade this morning, and we're going to discover that maybe the parade was a little bit different than what we are used to parades being. But first of all, I want to do something with you. I see all of you brought something very special. 
Can you put on what you brought with you today? Can you do that? I would really appreciate it. Oh, wow, okay. Those are special masks, aren't they? And do you know when we're supposed to use those masks? It's kind of hard to talk through them, isn't it? Yeah. Cooper, when do we use those masks? For uh, mask Yeah, and, and some of you have some special handmade masks that really look cool. And then some of you have masks that, that are, that's paper, right? It, with paper towel. So it's pretty easy to make, isn't it? Wow, that's pretty cool. Well, you know what I did? How many of you remember or have watched old westerns on TV? Do you know what I'm talking about? Western movies? Yeah. And do you remember what the bad guys did? They wore masks. And these masks look like this. And you know, in, <clears throat> in those western movies, when you wore a mask like this, you were considered a bad guy. But I bet I could walk around town and go to the grocery store with this mask on and not be considered a bad guy. Because everybody knows that we're trying to protect ourselves, but also we're trying to protect others from getting a very dangerous virus. Well, now why am I introducing this morning with these masks? It's because sometimes it's difficult for us to follow what someone else is telling us to do. And Jesus does something really unusual on that special day. And what was that unusual thing that he did? Do you remember? What did he do on Palm Sunday? He asked his disciples to get a donkey. How many of you would like to ride a donkey instead of a horse? None of you? Oh my, how many of you would like to ride a donkey? It might be fun, but put Jesus on a donkey and Jesus was going to ride through the crowds. And you know what he was showing all the people? that he loves everyone and that everyone is important, so important that he would do everything to help everybody else. That's what you are doing when you go out with a mask. You're helping everybody else. You know, you all look pretty cool with that mask, don't you? I bet I look kind of weird, don't I? I look a little bit different than usual. But thank you for being up here, and thank you for helping us out today, for carrying the palms up and doing all that you do. Can you fold your hands and say a prayer? Dear Jesus, you love us. You've done everything for us. Help us to love you and do all we can do to show our love to show your love to everyone around us. Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen. Okay, you may be seated. Palm Sunday, a bit different than what we are used to. We're accustomed to having a parade of children come in with the palm branches and maybe lay them before the altar and, and a, a full congregation, a full group of people waving palm branches as they come in. And this morning, we didn't quite have that, but we had the children coming in with palm branches, and thank you for that. And we had them being placed upon the cross that we will see change between now and Easter. But Palm Sunday is, is one of those Sundays that we can't help but be celebrative. 
We can't help but feel a sense of joy and excitement, even if we're in our homes, sitting with a possible palm branch or, or just watching what's going on and knowing that at that time, the children were singing Hosanna to the Lord and the Pharisees and the scribes and all of them were telling the children to be quiet. And Jesus said the very stones would praise God. The very stones would rise up if need be. So kids, youth, children, all of you continue to praise the God of heavens who created us and who redeemed us and made us his own. How do you like parades? You know, parades can be fun. We can enjoy watching them as the parade goes by and And sometimes we like to actually be in the parade so we can wave to people and and smile and let them know that this is a great time. Now, have that special wave. Thank you for that. We we can celebrate in a parade. You know, there's all kinds of parades. There's military parades that deal with how strong and capable we are as a country in protecting this land for freedom. We have parades of thanksgiving where we celebrate the thankfulness we have as a nation to be the nation that we have, one nation under God. And I've been noticing other parades in our neighborhoods. I've been noticing parades where people come and and they park their cars and they sit in their cars and they wave at a six-year-old child in the driveway singing happy birthday. In fact, on the 18th of April, there's going to be a parade in Southern Oregon for a grandson of ours as people get to sing happy birthday to him for his six years. Parades. Everybody loves a parade. And in in the time of, of Rome, when there was a parade, it was often a military parade. It was a conquering parade. It was a parade when the, the king or the emperor or the conquering soldier, captain of the armies, would ride into town on a big horse. And all of, all of those who fought with him followed in his train. And then following the soldiers were all those who were defeated. So the crowds could clap and yell and scream and support for the army and the military and jeer and laugh at those who were conquered. But the parade that Jesus led on that Palm Sunday was completely different. It was not a conquering king that everyone would have assumed or expected because he had a a donkey or a colt, a foal of a donkey, upon which he was sitting, going through the cities. And we're reminded of Zechariah 9, verse 9, that predicted, O Jerusalem, there will be one who will be riding on a foal of a donkey through the cities of Jerusalem. And that's exactly what Jesus was doing, revealing his righteousness, revealing who he was, and and what he was actually going to do for all humanity. When we look at the Gospels, we discovered that the disciples had a difficult time understanding Jesus. When they came down from the Mount of Transfiguration, the three disciples were a bit confused as to what they saw and how they could understand this whole change in Jesus. And later in John chapter 6, when when they're hearing about Jesus and the bread of life and that he is the bread of life, they were thoroughly confused. In fact, in the Gospel of Matthew, it talks about how many of the people that were following Jesus left him because they just did not understand the words that he was saying. And later in the Gospel of John, it simply states that the disciples did not understand Jesus till after the resurrection. And I don't believe that they understood Jesus when he said, go get that colt, that foal, that donkey, bring him to me, and I'm going to lead a parade. I'm going to ride that donkey through the streets of Jerusalem. And the disciples 
followed with all the people in front laying down all the palm branches because palms were an expression of kingliness. And they didn't understand. In fact, we find ourselves not understanding. That is why I want to bring to you Ephesians chapter 5, beginning at verse 15. Because I believe that Paul is saying to the church of his time and also to the church of our time, that God wants us to understand what this parade is all about, this godly procession. And he wants us to be a part of that procession. He wants us as the church to be following Christ. So what does Paul offer to us? What directions does he give to us so that we can understand how to be a part of this godly procession? In verse 15, he starts out with the words, Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best of time. Because the times are evil. What is evil? Evil is that kind of thing that is a result of sin and directed and empowered by Satan. Evil can present itself in all kinds of cruelty and in all kinds of illnesses and pestilences and, yes, even pandemic viruses. Because what Satan would love to do is destroy our hope in Christ and keep us from following that godly procession and following Christ. But I notice that many of you are taking time, this time when the days are evil, and and we know the evil of that COVID-19, that in these days of that evil power that's trying to infiltrate all of the lives it can, that you are making wise use of this time. Some of you are making those masks that the children wear, making it possible for families and others who, who do not have them when they go out in the community and go to the grocery store, they're protecting themselves and others from the virus. Some of you are taking the time to make phone calls to those who may be alone and have been alone for a long time and might have special needs from from getting groceries to getting medicines or, or just having someone to talk to on the phone. Some of you are actually traveling to the grocery store and picking up items or going to the pharmacy and picking up medicines to take to them and leave at their door. Some of you are making DVDs or delivering DVDs or placing them in the mail so that those who do not have the present day technology uh, of a computer or the use of the internet can still be a part of these services that we are doing online. And many of you are taking more time to read the scriptures and spend time in prayer. It's it's a a readjustment time to a certain extent. It's looking at the time that God gives to us and asking the question, how can we best use this time and, and set a pace for our lives that will be fruitful when all this is past and we go back to, quote, normal. In a real way, we are changing normal and we're making it better. The other thing Paul tells us is that we are to understand what the will of the Lord is. That we want to spend time in the Word so that we can capture in our minds just exactly what God wants us to do with our lives. This is a good time to consider that. Especially since we're home with our families for such a long period of time, we could, we could spend time talking about what is it that God wants us to do with our life. Maybe spend time with each of the children and ask kids, what is it that you believe God has placed in your life that he wants you to do with your life? We might get some surprising answers as to really taking the time in prayer and finding out what is it that God wants me to do, not only way out in the future, But what does he want me to do with my life right now with my friends and when I go back to school so that I can display God's love and grace? You know, Paul in Romans 12, verse 9, 
calls upon us to let love be genuine, abhor what is evil. Wow. Abhor what is evil, let love be genuine. If we could just start with those words, that would be a great start and a powerful impact upon our families and upon our children and upon our schools. To love genuinely with the heart of Christ. And to stay away from the evils of the world, the, the crimes and the curse of, of sinfulness as, as we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to do. To listen to God's word and his will and his direction for us. What Paul calls upon us finally to do is to submit ourselves to one another. Wow. That's easier said than done. It means taking the time as parents to submit ourselves to our children and listen to them and their cries and their needs. It means children to submit ourselves to our parents and understand what directions they're offering to us. It means for those who are leaders to submit and listen to those constituents and what they are saying and and what they are asking and for the constituents to understand and listen to the leaders. It is so difficult to do that. And when we look at these things that Paul is calling upon us to do in order to be a part of the parade, to be a part of that godly procession, that humble procession of Jesus, we find ourselves feeling guilty. We find ourselves feeling as though we have not done it. How can we begin to do it? We've spent much of our lives separated from these ideals. How can we now put them in place? And we all know that the reason why Jesus rode in Jerusalem on that donkey was to show all the people around him that he was submitting himself to his Father in heaven and submitting his life to every human being so that by his death on the cross, His blood would cleanse all of us from our sins. And he promises us that by going to the grave, he took all of our sins to the grave so that in the power of his resurrection, he gives us that same power, that same power to be aware of how we're walking in life, doing good, letting love be genuine, abhorring evil, pushing away from temptation, recognizing that God gives us the power to be different and that we begin that difference here and now during this hunkering down time. And we're able to do it and carry it on beyond this time because of the powerful love and grace that God gives to us through his son Jesus. I pray, I pray with you that this COVID-19 evil that has touched and corrupted our world will soon be dispensed with. And we will be the thankful people that Paul talks about. The thankful people that will parade the grace of God and parade the truth of God's love that is indeed the power that destroys all evil. In the name of Jesus, amen. Please join me for the prayer of the people. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people that we may be governed and preserved 
evermore in the body and soul, through Jesus Christ, your Son. We pray for the healing and for the well-being of your people who are struggling to fight against the spread of new virus. Help us acknowledge that during this time of difficulties, during this time of agony and pain, you never leave us and you're always with us as your people. We pray for our nation and for the other nations, for those who are sick and for the ones who are suspecting of having this disease. We pray for those who mourn, for the poor, for the press, for those who are in pain, and for those who experience hardship, and for those who are, on, who are lonely. We pray for the wisdom of those who lead us, and for those who lead the other nations of the world as well. We pray in this Palm Sunday for the leadership of your universal church throughout the world and for the leadership here at Anchorage Lutheran Church that you continue to give us guidance in this time of uncertainty. We pray for each of us that we may hear your call to the reconciliation in Christ and live faithfully according to your word. Provide us for those who are in need and we remember those who need our ongoing support. We pray for Rose, Judy, Elna, Karen, and Christine. We pray for those who are ill or hospitalized. We pray for comfort and the speedy recovery of Nelda, John, Susie, and for uh, Tanya, for Errol, for Anna, for Forrest, for Matt, for Liz, for Anne, for Don, for Norman and Norma, and for Julie. We pray for the family of Garner Bohm who passed away last week. May the God Almighty continue to give them courage and strength as they continue to deal with these tough times and tough choices upon his death. We continue to pray for our Christian brothers and sisters who are suffering in refugees camp and we have no means to help or to care for the disease. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Ethiopia. We pray for our sisters and brothers in the Middle East, and as well as for other places in the world. May your abundant love and peace shine upon all of them and all those who have no hope, so that your name will be glorified. We pray all this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue with the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive 
the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.